so we went. We went down to Northern California, and I wasn't familiar with the area, so Roger just, you know, he'd been down there a few times before, uh, talking to the different people in that area, which was Al Hudson, which you met here in, mm -hmm. uh, during this. And so uh, he told me how to get back in there, and, and of course we drove back in there and made camp, and for the next two two weeks or so, or almost three weeks, we just rode the mountains looking for tracks or whatever, you know, whatever we could come up with evidence, whatever evidence was there.
And so on October 20th, it was one of those beautiful sunshiny fall days, you know, and the leaves were all turning. The maple leaves were turning red and orange, and it was just a great day, sunshine, nice and warm. And Roger and I were riding up the creek bed. We had planned on staying out that, that night, going further back in, quite a ways back in, we were going to go five or six miles further back, and camp out because there was an area that we had ridden through prior to that that looked like great habitat, you know, it was kind of a the dense forest and then the creek running down through there. And so that's where we were actually going to stay out all night up there and, and see if we could hear something or, or whatever kind of, because yeah, we hadn't really seen uh, any other, uh, any evidence of all, because by the time we got down there to where these footprints were, it had rained really hard down there and they weren't real identifiable footprints like that you could plaster and cast them. And uh, so that's why we stayed so long. And that particular day, of course, uh, we came around the bend in the, in the crypt there where there was a big downfall tree with the root system up. And, and this uh, creature stood right alongside the creek. And I say stood because I was a little ways behind Roger uh, with my horse, and I was leading the pack horse. And apparently when Roger first saw her, and this is what Roger said because I didn't see that, he said that, that this creature was bending down by the creek. When I saw it, it was standing straight up. And so as Roger uh, got off his horse the best he could, with his camera and run across the creek and started filming. And then uh, he wanted to relocate to get a little bit better view where he could see it better. And he asked me if I'd ride across the creek and cover him, which meant ride across the creek and, and the event thing came back is what I took it. So that's when I rode across the creek. And uh, I knew if it come back, I couldn't, uh, couldn't take a shot at it on the horse. So I got off. I never raised the rifle to my shoulder. I just got off and stood there and watched it walk away. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's when you see this famous uh, turn like that and look back at it. And that's when it looked back at it. So many people say they couldn't take a shot when they see it. Do you One think? more time. Huh? A lot of the people now in, that have experiences say that when they see it, they can't shoot. Would you think you would have been able to? Well, I don't really know because... I didn't know really what was, I, I knew what I could say in because I didn't really know, you know. I yeah. could say it was a huge, a huge upright uh, thing walking upright like a man with tremendous muscle. And so I thought, well, if it turns and comes and towards... And probably just had him, you might have, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Well, I would have probably shot if it would have turned, but it sure. never, never, never turned, kept right on walking away from us. So I had no reason to even bring the rifle to my shoulder. And, and you know, and I, that was my instinct because I was an avid hunter at that time and an excellent shot because mm -hmm. uh, I... And what were you thinking, like, wow? Well, these things really do exist. 